since lockdown, I've had to do a lot more outdoor exercise as and when I can, since the gym hasn't been open. Also, the thought of attending a class with tons of people, using equipment, even if it had been wiped down is just kind of gross. So, I've been trying to spend a lot more of my time walking. Running isn't really my thing. Bad for your joints and your knees. No thanks. But, I can walk for hours, and it's been really good on keeping the pounds off and my appetite down. Because I've been doing this for a couple of months, I'm always trying to find a slightly different route. I pop on my sneakers, earbuds go in, and off I go, out for a few couple hours. It was on one of those evenings just a couple weeks ago when I had spontaneously decided that I wanted to stay out a bit longer and head somewhere different. I try to keep on the sidewalks as much as possible, better for my ankles, and less chance of coming across any potential serial killers in the woods. But that evening, something drew me to the woods. It wasn't pitch black dark, but certainly a lot darker in the trees than it had been on the sidewalk with all the street lamps lit up. As I was power walking my way through, I had this weird feeling in my gut. It was almost like I had been drawn. I actually started to speed up a bit more, cursing myself for going in there when it was dark and I could not see well, not even knowing where the way out was. I was beginning to panic a little when I bumped into something. Since this happened, I have read many cryptid encounters to see if I can find anything similar. It definitely seems like I was pretty unlikely to actually bump into mine. Most people just see a fleeting glimpse from afar but mine knocked me off my feet, literally. It was like speed walking into a brick wall. I was stunned and terrified. My first logical thought was that I had literally walked into a tree. As soon as I ran into whatever it is I did, I fell and looked up. That's when I began scrambling because I saw eyes and a terrifying solid figure that was moving before me. I got a really good look. Whatever this was, was robust and incredibly large. It didn't wobble though. Whatever it was was solid, just completely giant solid mass. I couldn't really make out arms or legs. It must have just been what I'd hit. Then I continued to look up. This thing was around maybe eight or nine feet tall. I'm talking huge, easily double the size of a bodybuilder. It was piercing, piercing yellow eyes. When most people see monsters, they run away. But I was just stuck in total fear and anxiety. And that's when this thing opened its mouth and everything around me went into slow motion. I couldn't make out any details, but at the same time, I could. This awful screech came out. And that's when I saw the bazillion tiny little teeth that accompanied its mouth. It was a long, gnarly snout, and that's when it appeared to have little appendages sticking off of its mouth, like odd little tumorous growths, and it was scaly and gross-looking, as if you took like a giant lizard or something, maybe a Komodo dragon, blended it with the DNA of a human and a few other random animals, and then mutated it by sticking it in toxic waste. I don't know what else to call it. It was hideous the more my eyes adjusted to it. I did my best to regain composure, slowly, very slowly, crawl away. And after I got about 10 feet away, it just looked at me, strangely, as if it wasn't sure what I was doing. Then, as if alerting itself to a sound, it quickly snapped its head to its right, looked back at me, looked back in the direction that it heard a sound from my guess, and then quickly followed it. I took that as an opportunity to bail. Now, I look back at this, and I don't know exactly what I saw, but after doing some research, I can't exactly pinpoint what it would have been. Bigfoots don't match the description. Either does a dogman. 
I don't even know if I saw a lizard man. Even though it did look reptilian in a way, it was far too grotesque and ugly. What do you think of my story? What exactly could I have encountered that night? Sometimes you see something and your brain just can't quite compute. You know, like when you hear about people that have been through massive traumas. Just forget it or make up another variant of events to protect their brain. Your mind can do that too when you see something weird. You can be looking at it and your mind is just in a hell no mode. That cannot be what you are seeing. That it's not even possible. That is why I refuse to believe that I had seen a lizard man just walking down the road on the way home. I must have had more to drink than I realized, and I must have been watching the sci-fi channel too much, or so I thought. All the excuses and rationale I could think of to not accept that I had actually seen a human-sized humanoid lizard. I even managed to convince myself that maybe I dreamt it. Because of this, I didn't tell anybody about it. After all, what would I say? People would think I had lost it. So when I was down to the pub a few weeks later, and one of my friends began on about his girlfriend, saying she'd seen this massive creature walking down the road, I nearly just laughed at him. He, of course, was saying that his girlfriend must have been crazy, or on something that doesn't exist, or that maybe she had been reading too many scary stories. As we began laughing and joking, to prove his girlfriend was imagining stuff, and clearly crazy. He said he was going to walk along this road on his way home and look out for the same thing, just in order to mock his girlfriend. Since that was the way I was going and the exact place I had seen this thing, when he was getting ready to head out, I downed my beer and told him I'd join him. I didn't know what to think. Did I want to see it? Would I prove something? Or was I hoping for some sort of really weird coincidence? And we both just had the same highly unusual hallucination. I was feeling more and more uncomfortable as my friend was just laughing and messing about. He kept making stupid noises, pretending to be a ghost or something, when we both suddenly stopped dead still. We had both heard some definite movement coming from the tree line next to us. That's when he wasn't looking so good. He was muttering under his breath. It's probably a fox or a rabbit. When he was ready to be literally for anything. Then, this thing stepped out onto the road. And like a snake, it even hissed. It was nearly six to seven feet tall. A little bit taller than both him and I. To be quite honest with you, this thing resembled something right out of a comic book. Naked green and scaly. Well, I think it was more brown, to come to think of it. But it was clearly ugly, and it resembled what it would look like if you took a human and mixed it with that of a lizard. It was also terrifying. It had an elongated face, two sharp snake-like eyes, and large teeth protruding from its upper jaws. And with a mouth that big and wide, Filled with tiny dagger-like teeth, they came a long tongue that shot out. It looked at us with such an intensity, not only shock that it was shocked we were there, but looked at us as if it was pissed that we had seen it. That was enough. We both turned and ran as fast as we could. It never did give chase. As far as I could tell, I think it just walked back where it came but I never did look over my shoulder. Nobody else ever saw it, and they still think the three of us would have did taken some sort of wacky-backy, but we know what we saw, a lizard man in the flesh. My dad is a keen fisherman and has traveled all over the country to participate in competitions. He also used to, and I stress here, used to, to try and find the way out of middle of nowhere type spots in case he could catch something that would get him instant global recognition in the cutthroat world of fishing. But you see, 
he actually did come across something. Only it wasn't a fish, and it frightened him so much. He no longer goes anywhere unless it is completely out in the open, and he is surrounded by the presence of others. This was somewhere out in Georgia where he had the experience. I'm not sure where exactly, as he refused to tell us the exact location, just in case we wanted to go looking for it. He had heard of some elusive fishing spot, where apparently the fish were huge, and there had even maybe been talk of undiscovered species of fish. That was more than enough to pique his interest, so off he went. He was going to be gone for four days. He came back after only one night, looking dead. He just walked straight into the kitchen and sat down. He wasn't really talking at first, and my mom and all of us were very worried. But then he went on to tell us that he found something that shouldn't exist. That's when my mom kept asking him about the wound in his hand, and he just said it was a mistake. It was all a mistake. Then he kind of casually just started talking out loud, almost hysterically. It was disturbing. He was telling us that he was out there fishing when a large walking alligator attacked him. When we were asking him, what do you mean a large walking alligator? He said it was an alligator, but it wasn't quite an alligator. He said it looked like one, but it walked on two legs, had bigger legs and longer, bigger arms, and nearly tried to grab him and pull him into the water. That it came after him, rushing after him in his tent. After that, we all just kind of sat quietly, not really sure what to make of his story. I love my dad, and I wanted to support him fully, but I didn't know what to think. My dad's a church-going guy. He doesn't make up stories, nor would he. And why would he cut his own trip short and come home looking like this? There's nothing for him to gain out of it. The wound on his hand, he told us, was when it grabbed him and gashed his flesh. This thing came out of nowhere, he said, what he believes was hiding in the bog, waiting for the right time to strike. He said it was larger than any gator he has ever seen, and has never seen or heard of any gators that supposedly walk on two legs. He kept calling it the Gator Man, but I don't really know what to think of it. We all, including my mother, just comforted him and just tried to listen and were there. After a while, he went to bed. Honestly, it's kind of disturbed me even to this day. We would always be there for my dad. I wasn't really sure what to make of it. <laughs>